funny because I've been at UCL since 2014 and I've seen the number of female students on campus and the dem demographics change throughout my time here. But I want to remind us that we can't mistake hypervisibility for power. Hi, my name is Sandra and I am running to be the next BME officer. I, I want to empower BME students to take a political stand for what they believe in. Um, the union has a long legacy in the BME, particularly in the BME campaign. The Why Is My Curriculum White um, campaign was started here. Um, you know, we also are the only full-time BME officer in the country. Um, and I think that legacy is so powerful to me. And I want to do my best to do that legacy justice and to continue on the amazing work that previous officers have done. So I've been an activist and community organiser since 2015. And, and that whole experience has taught me, it's taught me the importance of listening. You know, I think the stereotype about activists is that they're speaking over the voices of people, and to me, my experience of activism has taught me that it's so important to listen to, to listen to the voices of people and to empower them to act for themselves. The biggest thing is about physical education and about welfare support and the idea that collective care is a key ingredient to our communities. No one can do anything alone. And I think, you know, activism and organising has taught me that, you know, we're in this together, our oppressions are tied together. Our liberation is tied together and our victory is tied together. We need support services that are proactive. Um, we don't want to wait until BME students are struggling, until they are experiencing their worst mental health issues before they receive help. We want services that are responsive and that understand their needs, that understand cultural differences, religious differences, and that take those into account. In addition to financial difficulties, there's also housing difficulties. Um, if you don't have a guarantor, that's a big thing. You know, in London, I, I, you need a guarantor to get to get a place to live. If your family, if you don't know anyone who has a high enough income that allows you to receive stable housing here, then it's going to be extremely hard for you to find a place to live. Um, particularly if you're trying to find a place close to live, it's going to be even harder. That's why one of the things in my manifesto is about crisis accommodation for students. I think it's you know, I was nearly evicted at the start of this year from the place where I live with my partner and that was a terrifying situation where um, it was a terrifying situation where I didn't have anywhere to go to, I didn't know who to speak to about the fact that I didn't have any place to live. I think the idea of, you know, providing short-term crisis accommodation for students is really, is a really good idea. Um, not many people know that government welfare support for students is very minimal. You know, the idea is that if you're in full-time education, uh, student finance or your university will be able to pr provide for you. But for a lot of students, that isn't the case. If the government ignores people who are in full-time education, then I think it's a university's duty to support um, the welfare and housing of BB students. You know, housing is a right. Um, being at university shouldn't being at university shouldn't exclude you from receiving a stable place to live. And I think these are important things I want to fight for.